Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Light Warriors Unleashed podcast, episode 93. I can't even believe we're at episode 93. I had a beautiful, beautiful chat today with Cassandra, who's like an intuitive business, soul alignment, kind of does some of the work that I do and what I used to do in the field as well. And we had this beautiful chat about business, about what's moving through the collective. What are we being called to? She works a lot with spiritual entrepreneurs about holding space for them inside of their evolution and all of the healing work that we are being called into from the shadow side, from the dynamic side, from all the things. And we definitely talk about surrendering because that's such an important aspect and key dynamic to our spiritual evolution, especially us as entrepreneurs. And it was just such a beautiful, beautiful episode. And the cool thing was that right after we recorded this, I jumped onto her podcast, which will be out in May. Um, and I will make sure to share all the links and stuff on my social platforms once that episode goes down, because we then leaned into energetics and business. And that's what we chatted about on her podcast episode. So it was just a really cool space and cool endeavor today to move together. So without further ado, I want to give to you Cassandra Rosa in episode 93 of the Light Warriors Unleashed podcast. Well, this is going to be a really fun episode, and I actually cannot wait to deliver this content into the world with you, Cassandra, because I feel like I do have a lot of people that listen that are entrepreneurs. I have a lot of people in my life that are spiritually based considering entrepreneurship, and I think that the conversation we're about to talk about is is like going to be really potent for all of us in this collective that are desiring to move our impact through in connection with our spiritual paths and creating business structures and revenue streams and all the juiciness around that. So like, I'm excited to be here with you today and thank you so much for like saying yes and for us to be able to like maneuver through this. I'm just sitting in so much gratitude. Thank you so much for having me and I'm so excited to chat with you today. I am too. So let's talk about intuitive business. And like, I wanna just lead off with this question of like, what does this mean to you, to your people, to the work you do, like wherever you want to kind of take this, like I just, what does it mean to you when I ask you that question, intuitive business? Yeah. So <laughs> I guess sharing a bit of my story will make this make a little bit more sense, but mm -hmm. I started my business in 2015. Um, I started off kind of focusing on productivity and goal setting and all of that. And I launched and I got some feedback, but it was a little bit crickets. It wasn't what I expected it would be. And I was in a session with a client and I keep seeing my angel cards off to my left. And I just felt called to pull some cards for her. And I did so. And she loved it. She's like, can we do this every session? I'm like, this is so cool. So then I had done a lot of spiritual work behind the scenes, kind of using angel cards, meditation, Reiki. And I was like, hmm, wouldn't it be fun to just play with this experience? Because this client was asking for it and kind yeah. of introduce those modalities into my space. So that's what I've done. And once I kind of changed my bio title and stood into that version of myself authentically and holistically, my business started to take off and go in an absolutely completely different direction than I expected, but also <laughs> the best, in the best good, right? So to me, an intuitive life business coach healer is really encompassing all aspects of myself in a very holistic experience for my clients. So I love mm. to do things on the practical human level with kind of workshops style coaching when I'm coaching yeah. my clients so that they're taking the steps and getting out of their head and taking action. But yeah. then I always do an intuitive sprinkle. So like I would channel messages for them, do mm. card readings, meditation so that they can have a transformation on the physical human level, as well as awaken themselves on a spiritual level. Uh, this is so fun. So like our journey is similar. Um, but I worked like I started my entrepreneurship company like 15 years ago. So a little bit more deeper in. And I was a very pragmatic business coach, similar to yourself, goal setting, process development, duplication of business. I did a lot of leadership development, culture management, and all the like pragmatic stuff. And mm -hmm. at the same time, I was in my own spiritual journey, taking courses for fun, doing all the things. And it was in 2020 that I finally stepped in to embody the spiritual side and actually lead in the soul mission activation and lead in all the spiritual work that I do. Um, and I literally, it was like one of those drops that came in, it's time. And I was like, what do you mean it's time? You know? And it was like, and I, cause the business wasn't, it was doing well. Like I, I was always like, you know, a six plus figure earner every year and I was able to make it, but I was pulling teeth and I was gritting and it was hustle. And it was always like moving energy through it and always doing that kind of work. And 
when I finally surrendered into like the spiritual side and the intuitive side and like actually owning my gifts to share in the world and doing the activation stuff, it was like everything changed for me. So I get you in the perspective of the work that you do and how that moves through like the calling forward. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to imagine that this is something that you do with your clients too. Like they come to you for a certain reason, but there's like this calling that's mm -hmm. coming forth for them. Is that true? Like, would that be like, would that be something yeah. that you're, that you're up to? Yeah. Yeah. My avatar, if you will, what they say in business is like a spiritual entrepreneur. And I find that they come in at the beginning of their journey, just with like mm. with curiosity, maybe they started playing with the different tools, but it's really about that application, that embodiment. I love to talk about being your fulfilled femme, the most fulfilled, intuitive version of yourself when it mm. comes to business. So yeah, they're in the beginning of their journey. They may have played with some tools, but they're ready to awaken to their next level and develop a very aligned connection and deep connection with their intuitive selves. Yeah. And I want to ask this question because I've been seeing this a lot in the collective and there's been some business coaches that are out there getting everybody to do business a certain way. Like they're mm -hmm. putting people into boxes and they're going, this is the only way to success. You can't have memberships and one-to-ones. You got to focus here. And all the things that people are saying, which worked for us five, 10, 15 years ago, potentially, because that was the energy we moved through. And then we went through this massive shift and opening consciousness and the awakening that's happening right now in the world. And things have shifted and changed inside of the perspective. So where is your stance on uniqueness inside of business models like what does this feel like for you in the way that you lead your clients through the work that you're doing with them it's not one size fits all and yeah. i think when i even looking back in the beginning when i started my business in this regard um it was very masculine it was go 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 it was marketing mm. sales go and get what you want, hustle culture. And now things have kind of shifted into more of the feminine. And I think when all the pandemic and everything was happening, it was more that feminine. So we yeah. flipped to the other side of like yeah. attraction marketing and magnetism. And I feel like now we're kind of at a place of finding this space that you can be completely aligned within self and anchor in those two parts of you to find your own uniqueness. Cause it's not one size fits all. And I know when I was in my journey, I took so many courses and learned so many things and that can be so overwhelming. And I yeah. know for my clients too, they get caught up in the overwhelm of all the possibilities and mm -hmm. trying on all the things just because this person's like, if you do it my way, you're going to get yeah. your six figure year that you want. Right. <laughs> so it's really about, an inward journey. And I feel like I'm awakening and rebirthing my next level. So my business is doing that with me as we speak now. Yeah. And I find we focus on the external so much when it comes to life and business and results and success mm. and dollar amount and number of people and all these yeah. things. But yeah. to achieve that, you can hustle all you want and it can be this hard experience. But when you go inward and you do the inner work within, then that's yeah. going to transform your outer world. So that's kind of how my messaging and my experience mm. as a coach has even shifted in terms of the type of content that I'm feeling called to share now. Yeah. And I love this. This is a very powerful, like powerful energy that you just brought forth for us to consider and feel into because it's the same thing that happened within my brand over the last even three years. You know, I was doing a lot of, I, I called it the aligned business accelerator and teaching the mechanisms with the energies inside of it. But there was a time last year that I was just like, this isn't me any longer. Like this isn't this served a purpose because it blended the worlds together for me to easily merge from the pragmatic business side and the spiritual side and bring them together because I really believe in that imprint of uniqueness and I really hold that. But my imprint now is an activation and is really helping people own their spiritual gifts and lean into their power and truth and actually hold it. And then if we're in one-to-one -one capacity together, then I am with you that way and I can help serve you from the business side. But I'm not leading in it any longer. Like I, I think I probably still have to change my Facebook page that I never use and haven't posted on since 2021, but you know, like all the other things don't state anything about that. And I love that you brought that up because I feel like sometimes, well, I know that most of the energies right now that we're moving through is in surrendering and trusting, but it's also the letting go inside of that whole mechanism. And sometimes we're so rigid, like we're rigid in that as humans, like we just, 
don't want to let go, you know? So yeah, I would just love for you to comment on that because I feel like there's there's a lot of potency in some of the stories that you have, I think, with clients that you've worked with about it. So yeah, go for it. Yeah, the past three years has been like this very deep journey for me of really learning what surrender really means and letting go. Mm. Like I remember being in courses and learning about it and being like, I just don't get it. Like this letting go <laughs> thing, like what is that, right? Just because I guess I lean more masculine by airplane mode, you know, um, yeah. in the start of things, right? And I think even the way that society is set up, it's very masculine and it's very control and it's check off each box if you want to be successful and you'll be happy and fulfilled and all these things once you get all those things, right? So that kind of ingrains us into our subconscious about right. showing up in life that way. So when things don't go across, you know, the way that we think that they should be in the ABCs of success, there's a state of panic that often happens. Yeah. So it was interesting. I was living in Mexico in 2021 and I like mm -hmm. manifested like everything that I wanted and I loved it. And I ended up having to come back to Canada and it shook me to my core because I was like, I had everything that I wanted. I checked all the boxes. Mm -hmm. And in this stage where I have to be home with family, how am I going to feel all those things? Right. The vision board. I Like I'm not living my vision board at the moment, right? And mm -hmm. it was one of the biggest gifts for me because it really made me understand the importance of finding like fulfillment in the small moments and learning right. how to surrender to the seasons of life and mm -hmm. in business because it's interesting I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but you see the highlight reels on social. And then when yep. your life is not in alignment with the highlight reels of all the big people, you're like, yep. what the heck am I going to do here? You know, yeah. like, how can I surrender to this season that I'm in? How can I surrender to the lessons here when you have the biggest desire to like impact thousands of people and be in all the stages and have all of the, you know, um, the visual things that you can post on social happening in your life. But I really had to go through this cocoon, rebirth, mm. another dark night of the soul aspect to be able to understand like the true <laughs> thing of like surrender, allowing, yeah. trusting, faith. Mm. And yeah, I'm getting chills talking about it. Yeah, no. I, I don't know if I answered your question, but I just had <laughs> a little tangent there. I don't even remember what the question was, so that was perfect, you know? <laughs> and that's what I love about podcasting, and I love that I don't hold, like, I, I'm like, we kind of got an infrastructure we're working within based on, like, your your gifts moving into the world, but, like, I want it to flow. Like, I have, we started off with one conversation in, in some podcasts and moved to completely different other things, which is exactly perfect for what's being called forward from us. Right. And the power of this, like I, I have been through multiples, the dark nights of the souls, multiple rebirthings. Just when I think that the rebirthing is finished, there's a new layer that moves into the field and it's, it's just part of the journey. And I, I find it funny now actually. And like, I literally was making my coffee right before we popped on and um, after this, I have a training call with a group program that I'm a part of, and then I have a free afternoon, but I'm leading a circle tonight mm -hmm. and I'm like, I know I need to go to the gym. Um, I know I need to take the puppies out and actually run them for a while, but I'm like, what am I going to like, what I have stuff I need to do. There's always stuff to do. There's always things. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just not feeling that. And if I'm not feeling that, then the energy I'm creating is going to not be in alignment and I'm just going to breathe into the afternoon today and just see where it takes me. And I before wouldn't have been able to hold that where it would be just like you had mentioned the hustle energy and the go and we need to get this done and all this needs to move and sure it all needs to get done somewhere. But I'm like, I don't know, like I just don't, I don't have it there, you know, and I've also just been through an experience that's still radiating in my field over the last 10 days. And I'm just like, I feel like this is the answer today. And by doing that work, it allows me to then hold it even more potent when I step into the space because I'm actually doing the work in or inwardly, right? So, oh, yeah. That, that Thank permission, you. right? That permission, like, yeah. you know, it's interesting when we're going through these rebirths and we're going through the human stuff of being a coach. Like, mm. I don't know when I was going through the thick of it, like, I 
found a few coaches that were being open and vulnerable, but it seemed like there was like this perfectionist mask, this pedestooling yes. that was happening. And I acknowledged that I was doing that for people too, like mm. feeling better than or whatever that may be. Yeah. And I acknowledged him like the way that I'm going to show up in my business in this new chapter is just being authentic and ex going deep. I actually just launched a going deep video series that we talk about the things that really happen in entrepreneurship, like mm. the human parts, the the internal work that you do to create your external results. And I'm like, I'm going to show up for myself that way. And I'm not going to be perfect. And I'm not going to feel like I can't post on social media today because there's not mm. the highlight reel to show. Like, I think that that's needed more than ever, like from this industry, because I don't oh, know, yeah. I've kind of unsubscribed from the get your 10K months, get your six figure months, like, yeah. you know, and really started to connect with people and look, even connecting with you, um, yeah. go into the depth and yeah. show their human and create that spaciousness for themselves to do their own work and share it authentically. That's kind of the season I'm in right now. <laughs> no, and I we're being called into that season, like as a collective, as a whole, like all of us are moving through and all the parts of it, like whatever that means for you, because Cassandra, it means something for her, it means something different for me. And, but every single one of us is moving through that authenticity of showing up, you know? I, I don't even know what it was like last month or something. I completely dismantled the conversation of like having to show up on video fully like makeup and hair done. Like I can't do my hair in this country. It doesn't even matter. Like I could flat iron it and I could stay in an air conditioned home and still within an hour, my hair just decides to do what it wants. So this is my hair after I wash it and let it dry on its own. This is what it does. And I'm just owning oh. that this is my hair. Right. And I go on to Instagram with no makeup on and I, just am in my space of where Colleen four years ago would never have done that. I'd have to get, get ready and it would be perfect. Or I wouldn't have my kitchen in the background here as a background or like all the things that before used to be important. Now it's like, how can I show up and make sure that you feel my energy and the vulnerability and rawness that it is. And some people still will show up that way, but they have other things in the background that mean something to them. Like, and you're like, you're podcasting behind your vision board because that means something to you, which is different than here's an aesthetic I want you to see so it makes me look better. You know, right. and it's like we're dismantling all of this and people want real and raw and in it and vulnerable and like that's the energy and they're going to feel it if you're not and they may not know consciously like we've done the work and we're still doing the work and we'll continue to do the work, but consciously they don't know why. And consciously, they have no idea. So that's why I said, like, I could go in and do the work today, but the energy is going to be off. And some, like, the people that are meant to get whatever it is I'm creating won't be able to find it because the energy's off, you know? Well, it's even creating that space and permission for you to have your inward moment. And, like, mm. maybe by you giving yourself that permission and being in that inward moment, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, that will be enough for you to shift the energy of you just giving that space for yourself. And that's what I found for myself. I had never taken a hit yeah. hiatus in my business. I took a month off in the beginning of this year when certain things were coming to a head personally. And yep. from that, it's just like, phew, like, it, yeah. like the amount of breakthroughs and awakenings and like, it was almost this real of things that happened for me just changed me in so many beautiful ways. It felt like a year's worth of work in a month by just creating that space. So I always tell people, create that space for yourself because you have no idea how much transformation is waiting to birth through what they, when there's a space for it to go almost. Yeah, it's so true. And I feel like as humanity, we're still in our program of doing all the time, right? And it's still that program that's running through the collective and we're dismantling it. And some of us are really leaning in, but I think it's still one of those conversations. Like, I don't even know how to be, you know, like, how do you be in the world that teaches you how to do, you know, and it's like Costa Rica has held me that way. And I'm sure Mexico did the same thing for you. And that's the alignment you really felt there. Cause I'm Canadian as well. So like, I understand what's happening in Canada. Yeah. And, yeah. and I get, it. I get you. Like, you know, we don't have to talk about it. I understand. And Costa Rica holds the, the palette for me to understand, like my house, like right here, literally you could see the patio doors here. I have a balcony that's, that faces the sunset over the ocean and it's the most expanded energy. And I can just go out and sit and watch and be with, all the trees you see, maybe the puppies might bark a little bit. Um, but like, it's just, 
it, it changes the energy and it's 10 minutes a day or 15 minutes a day or half an hour, how, however long I sit out there. But it's like, I make a conscious choice and decision every day to follow that pull in the energetics. And I think that's one of the keys as well, whether it's in marketing, whether it's in how you show up, whether it's how you lead your offers, whether it, that's in life, right? I love that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So where do I want to go next? And I'm feeling called to just be like, let's just open up this doorway here inside of this space because I feel like there's some info that's dropping in about like what's happening in the energy of the collective right now is there's a lot of confusion I feel and a lot of like some chaos and struggle that's showing up because people are maybe battling against the work or they're not choosing to surrender into the space. But if we really lean into these business owners and some of the people that you're working with, like what are you seeing really show up right now um, in the space of what, what people are going through, the work that you do in the world and what can we do to kind of honor that is what I kind of want to say with the verbiage. Yeah. Yeah. There's a big, shift that's happening collectively uh awakening now we're in like the age of aquarius and all mm -hmm. of that that's unfolding so the external world and the systems that we're used to are coming to a head uh, about to crumble right yeah. and, and that chaotic energy on the external world is a gift in many ways because it's awakening a new level of evolution for the whole, um, mm -hmm. but internally, it's also for people shaking up belief systems, old ways of being, okay. scarcity mindset, all these things are coming up. So I'm finding that a lot for my clients is like this kind of, you know, um, chaotic energy. Mm -hmm. And what I'm kind of harnessing in and guiding them to do is to make it an internal shift. Right. Yeah. So that no matter what's happening on the external world, that you're good on the inside and you're able to hold and focus in on your role in all of it. Right. Because there are a lot of spiritual entrepreneurs, healers, impactpreneurs, right? So that's kind of what I'm finding. And it's kind of mirrored. I always find healers, coaches are a little bit ahead of the collective because of being more awake. Right. That. They might go through these initiations before everyone else because we're the people that are going to guide people. So yeah, really um, giving them permission and reminding them of that so that they can do that deepening and that they can I... find safety, happiness, fulfillment, purpose, whatever it is within so they can navigate the outside world and be able to support other people in the process. Yeah. So the chaos is is a gift because... They're yeah. able to unpack how that triggers you and give you an invitation to kind of go inward and get into your most aligned place. Yeah. And do you do the, this kind of work with your clients? Like, is this, is this the work mm -hmm. that you do as going, going, that's awesome. I love that. I love that for the collective. You know, it's so fun. Um, I was in a plant medicine ceremony 10 days ago, literally with psilocybin and through all of the stuff I had to work through or chose to work through at the time, um, I kept getting this vision of like this old Spanish home and like literally sitting in the windows and everything's quiet except for nature. And you see the trees, there's no one else around. And it's like this time of like recouping and resetting and, and maneuvering forward. And not to say that's relevant for everybody, but in this moment of my journey in life, it, it was like, it's relevant for me and I'm still serving and stepping into the commitments I've made and the things moving through, but the energy is different. And it's almost like this afternoon I could step into all the things that I feel I need to step into, but it's like, maybe it's time to go back to the Spanish balcony and like be sitting in the doorway in the mountaintops this afternoon for a while and connect back into that space of that real truth in the inner knowing you know, and it's like, and that's the real work that we do. I say all the time, that's the real work, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like in those spaces and moments of time, there's the work is right there. I'm almost getting a channel message from you. Is like, there's so much healing available to you, even sitting on the balcony and just being in the energy of Costa Rica and asking like mm -hmm. the energy of Costa Rica to support you in this. And I'm sure whatever um, is shed or whatever support that you receive from giving yourself that space that will only allow your circle. I think you were saying you have a circle later um, yep. to elevate as well. So that's so exciting. Yeah. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm leading a circle later on Egyptian lineage and like reclaiming the golden ages. 
So mm-hmm. I'm channeling a whole bunch of like god- goddesses from the Egyptian line and stepping into that. And it's a powerful place because like I really connect in deeper, deeply with especially Isis, like that energy of who she represents in the world. So I know that there's space that's needed before the circle for sure to be rooted into the space of that. But I'm like, I love, I love that. And thank you for that visualization. I super appreciate it. Yeah. Of course, you'd be talking about Egypt because I remember having like very big past lives in, in Egypt for me where I really like exceeded my potential um, mm-hmm. in those lives. So of course, you would bring that forth at this moment in time. That was a gift for me in itself. Thank you. There you much. go. <laughs> Here's some more remembrance. Take yeah. it. You know? like, I love and I love that about humanity and I love that about people. And I love that when we fully own ourselves and we come and shine our light bright, that we meet people and we get to leave gifts, we get to receive gifts, we get to flow within the whole potency of polarity and divinity and duality in the world. But we get to like be here. Like we, I wasn't like, what kind of gift can I give Cassandra today? That's never what my thought was. I was like, let's step in and have an amazing conversation. And then Mm -hmm. I get a gift and you get a gift and we just keep moving the energy through just like my coffee this morning or the things that I've maneuvered through today, you know? So Yeah, so I love it. I really love it. Um, I want to lead you into the space of like, what's coming through your heart right now to speak into humanity? Like we're, we're at a pivotal change, right? With this inner work we're doing. Some people shit's hitting the fan. Some people are avoiding it. Some people are stepping right into it. Some people are on the other side of it, but they're about to hit their next levels in another way. But like, I just, what's coming through your heart to just kind of share into the world? I'd just love to hear that. Mm, So much. So much. (laughs) What take it? <laughs> Everything happens for your like the best, mm-hmm. even the most chaotic moments. And the way that you can surrender to them is asking, like, "What are you trying to teach me in this moment?" Because mm. the more this. you resist it and you get caught up in like "woe is me" energy, and kind of. Yeah, focus on the what was me energy, not feeling the feel because it's important to feel the feels, but kind of feel like you're a victim in your own life. The longer it's going to take for the breakthrough to take place. So really surrendering can look like and feel like for people that don't know how to surrender and let go is really seeing what the lesson is, seeing what the golden Mm -hmm. nugget is, is whatever is coming through for life. Because this is a, a time in humanity that I feel like coaches, healers, spiritual entrepreneurs are going through an initiation for the next level because society, the world is going to be different than we've ever experienced now welcoming in this new age. So it's important to surrender to the initiation and be authentic in the process because so many people are going through it right now. So look for the lessons and know that you don't have to be a guru to share. Mm. Like I'm kind of leaning into this energy of like, big sister energy. I don't want to be a big sister. I just want to be big sister energy. Hey girl, I literally just went through what you went through. Like I'm happy to guide you and give you some tips. Yeah. Share my experience with you in an authentic way. So you feel seen and heard and understood and help Mm. you. My hands here. Like I'm here to help you and guide you. Yeah. So I think it's surrendering to that because I remember even going through everything that I've gone through so much this so far this year. It's like, hmm, like maybe I should be further along in the healing process to do this or, you know, yeah. have a gazillion external results to be able to share this. I'm like, nah, I feel like being authentic at, like every step of the mm-hmm. way um, is huge. So I'm kind of inviting a lot of other people to do that because I know so many other healers are kind of going through their own initiational moments. Yeah. Um, so lean into that, yeah. lean into that, because I feel like by us sharing our stories and allowing someone else to be seen, heard, and understood, and feel that in that experience, that's going to help them to navigate their experiences too. Right. So, yeah, it's all come yeah. together at the other. Well, and that vibration of truth right through us. So like it's like we're being called back into our truth and showing up in that truth, which is exactly what you're you're speaking into is like allowing ourselves to be seen that way too and to actually honor and hold and I didn't logically I didn't understand um why I was meant to do my podcast this week I have a solo episode I launch every week too and I did it live on Monday on Instagram while recording on Riverside so I had them both playing out at the same time 
huh. and it was talking about the psilocybin journey and the healing work that I did in that journey. When I was 17, I just found out literally in that journey that I had been raped like by multiple guys at 17. And I went back into that space and found out all the information because I went in with the attention going, why do I keep getting blocked? Why do I, why can't I seem to like gather in this space? And that was the intention. And I was told to do it live on Instagram and record the podcast at the same time. And at the time I didn't under, like, I don't question it. I just do because I've learned through the years, let's just take action. But you brought it almost eloquently into words just in this moment of time as to why I was driven to that. Now, Instagram's holding that video back. They're not like pushing it out into the world. There's only five views on the live. And even when I do other lives, there's 50, 100, 200 views on lives. And I'm okay with that because I like, there's no expectation that it was going to go viral or that I just hope and put in the energetic intention that those meant to hear it that way can find it and see the video because I openly talk about rape and I'm sure it's a trigger word on Instagram where they like totally yeah. block that type of algorithm but I wasn't going to show up and not say the words and their potency because there's something about the potency that needed to be moved through the world and it's just so interesting and I so appreciate that you brought words to the process that I went through this week and stepping into that to speak it into the world so it's just it's really cool really cool I'm so glad and I feel like maybe it was a big part just for you by doing that like maybe you, by you going live on Instagram, it would help you in your healing process. So maybe oh, the masses sure. didn't hear it, you know. Yeah. Um, maybe that was the main intention, and everything else was the cherry on top, right? Yeah, it was. It was for me, and mm -hmm. so yeah. And I and and that's the thing too about healing. When we talk about this in the journey, it's like it's always multifaceted. It's never linear. Um, it never goes in the box we think it's going to go into. And sometimes when we're in the box, it's like the whole box, it busted open and now you're in a circle, you know, like, and it's like, it's that, it's that beautiful weaving of things. It's a beautiful weaving of things. Um, you've got some stuff going on. You obviously mentioned one of your programs. You, you've got some work that you do in the world. I'd love for you to just talk more about your work and like, where people, we're obviously going to have links and stuff in the show notes, but where people can find you, what does this mean, how this shows up in the world? And yeah, go for it. Yeah. So I'm going to be launching, I think by the time that you release this, the going deep kind of immersive experience, which is like yeah. a four session package, an intensive in which my client would bring forth something that they feel like they're called to go deep in and heal um, internally when it comes to entrepreneurship. So if it's like imposter syndrome, if it's the doubts, if it's the fears, if it's money stories, and we're going to go through an immersive experience to be able to help them to start to be able to move through it and go mm -hmm. deep and have a safe space to do it, both on the practical way and the subconscious way, but also on the spiritual. So those will be available on my website. Um, I have the Going Deep series that's in my mm -hmm. Facebook group. So we're talking about different topics that are internal things that spiritual entrepreneurs go through and going deep discussing them. So you're welcome to come and join the group. It's free. And then I have my podcast, Fulfilled Female Entrepreneur, that Colleen's going to be a guest on that we talk about fulfillment, the most fulfilling part of our work. And then I create the stage where people like Colleen can share their zone of genius and what is deeply fulfilling for them to help you to create that own fulfillment for yourself. And that's available mm. on all podcasting platforms. So it's yeah. a few things going on, but you can go to my Instagram and check the link in bio or yeah. Cassandrosa.com to see all that's going on in my world and connect. I'd love to go deep with you. Yeah, I love this. And you know, what's so fun is I was... Um... I have a program launching in April. It's a higher self program. Like I, like I say, I do a lot of the spiritual work now because I'm actually leaning into the calling. Um, and the program's called The Deep. The Deep. <laughs> and so when you're talking about deep, I was like, of course she's talking about deep. You know, like it's just so funny. It's so, it's so funny how it all, it all aligns. And those of us, you know, like it's just like this beautiful like weaving of energies together. Um, yeah, I just, I feel like we hit some major points in there and very condensed. And I was like, 
and I know your podcast is like short, so it's like you're so used to like getting powerhouse information condensed in, in a certain period of time that I'm like, I feel like we got everything I desire to feel into this today. But I want to just give you the floor. If there's anything else that you want to state, like if there's any last, last moments of thoughts that are moving through that they're calling you to speak into, I want to make sure we dive into that. Yeah, I love fulfillment and impact. Those mm-hmm. are like the biggest things that I commonly focus in on, on my programs and in my content. Um, so fulfillment is available to all of us. Mm-hmm. We often make it connected to the journey, um, mm-hmm. connected to the destination of once we hit six figures, once we yeah. become a full-time entrepreneur, of whatever X, Y, Z that may be for you. And if there are aspiring entrepreneurs here or people that are new to business, I really invite you to find the fulfillment on the journey in the small moments. So by you showing up and doing that social media post, ooh, that was fulfilling. Or having a DM conversation with a new follower, ooh, that feels good. Like really leaning into that every step of the way so that the journey will unfold in a very fulfilling way. And I know impact we all want it in the masses and in the numbers, but as you're starting out, really lean into the impact in the small moments mm. and in the human that you're connecting with. Because yeah. sometimes we get caught up in in the massive impact that I'm sure yeah. all of us want to make to change the world. We lose sight of the people that were actually working in front of us or the person that you're DMing you know, just because you don't see your their face, you might lose sight of that. So really focus in on every step of the way, on the way to achieving your potential is something that I felt called to share for whatever reason, someone needed to hear it. <laughs> yeah, well, you gave me a gift in that too. So I was like, Oh, there's another one. Thank you. you know, like, I was like, <laughs> and that's perfect. And that's how I lead my life, though. We don't know who's listening, who needs something our job as you know, spiritual beings in this earth every single one of us is to keep following the call and speaking into what's coming through us because we don't know who's listening we don't know when this is going to land for someone like it could be a year or two down the road that someone finds yeah. this and this was exactly what they needed to hear at this moment of time and i love that about life that we don't have all the answers that we can't predict it all that we get to just be and the more we be together and the more we expand that in all the ways that we do that the more impact we get to make in the world in all the ways so yeah so good i love it um Mm -hmm. this was amazing cassandra like seriously this was so great um i feel like our journeys have been parallel in some ways shape or forms obviously with our own unique flares and frequencies and calibrations and all the things but i love that you got to mirror back some parts of me that like i just got to see again you know so thank you yeah, literally. Thank you. I'm I'm really grateful for this. Yes, I'm so grateful too. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you're so welcome. And just like I always say to everybody, guys, if someone in your life, you feel called to share this with them, share it out, tag us on Instagram. You know, if there's a quote or something that moved you, let us know. We want to know. Like we are open to the feedback. We want to know you're listening, um, get a review onto the podcast as well. So other people can see it too. And yeah, let's just go make movements and waves in the world and keep shining our lights brightly. Wasn't that just like so great? Like I love Cassandra's energy. I love how she got right to the point. And it was so funny because usually the podcast with guests are a lot longer than that, but she just narrowed it in. Her podcast episodes are pretty short too. So she's got that ability to just bring it all in together. And I felt like we were complete at the recording stuff and moving that through, but she dropped so many nuggets. And this was one of those podcasts where it could be in the words And I got beautiful, amazing gifts in the podcast as well, which you guys obviously got to hear. And I'm just really grateful for the connection. I'm grateful that I get to step in with you. I'm grateful that we get to be here together. I'm grateful for all of the things. And like I said in the podcast, I'm like, I always say, help us spread the word. Help us get it out. Help us share this out into the ethers. Um, There's people in our lives that need it. And the more we get to be seen this way, the more they can get the information that they are being called into the world to have. And so, yeah. Just so grateful, guys. And I'll see you guys all in episode 94 coming at you.